We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question comes from Twitter, where Servant of the Sacred Fire asked, For his seventh birthday, my youngest wants a board game in which he can play as the monster. Any suggestions? Well, thanks for the great question, and happy birthday, Sacred Fire Jr. Um, when I first saw this, I was thinking there's got to be a bunch of these, right? Like games you play the monster. There's tons of those out there, aren't there? And a handful of games did come to mind right away. I'll get to those in a minute. But after those like first five or so that I'm like, yeah, I've got this, this, this and this. I was like, wait, that maybe that's it. And then I started thinking about more and I'm like, actually, this is a pretty uncommon theme. This is not. A, a this isn't terraforming mars or farming this is this is a a theme that i think is actually kind of underexplored and it also depends on how you want to define monster though i yeah. think knowing the question is coming from the point of a seven-year-old does help to clarify that yeah <laughs> And I got to say, after after doing some digging and research and thanks to some awesome folk on Twitter, I was able to find some more games, um, especially when I decided to include RPGs as well as board games, which I didn't think of at all when I first read the question, um, though I still ran into a problem finding games for a seven year old because, well, there are a number of games that fit monsters. How many are going to appeal to a younger kid? Now, have we, as we've said in the past. Age alone isn't really much of a deciding factor for games. True. Some kids are playing Power Grid and some are playing Memory, as well mm -hmm. as all the games in between. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Whatever level they're playing at, playing games and having fun is what matters. Exactly. So what I did here is I am taking into account the seven-year-old thing, right? That's part of it. But again, not knowing how skilled, unskilled, those are wrong words. What types of games the seven-year-old's capable of playing um, I decide we'd expand the top instead of talking about games where you play the monster that would appeal to seven year olds. I'm just going to go with every game Well, not every game out there, but every game we could find that sounded good that anyone can play for any age where you play the monster and not just kids games where you play the monster, though. I am going to start the list off with the stuff that I think is going to be better for younger kids. So here we go with our list of games where you or at least someone in the game is playing the monster. Now, I'm going to do one side note before you get to that, since someone's already brought it up in the chat. Um, well, there are a number of monsters throughout history, and there are other ways you can interpret monster. We are mainly taking this to be the rar monster, you know, tooth and claws, hairy, hideous. No, no, there is very good argument that in Monopoly, you play the monster, and that's not this list we're yeah, talking for, about for our For our purposes, Hitler is not a monster yes. in this scenario. So you could play Secret Hitler if you want a game where you want to play that particular monster. Not my usual game recommendation. Again, we're looking at Mar Monster, which is why I went with that title of the episode being Rar on the yeah. monster to try to get that across. So, of course, the first one I've already had someone in the chat call it out. So first game that popped into my head as soon as I read this question is, of course, King of Tokyo. This is a great game for a seven year old, in my opinion. Kids love this game. Adults love this game. You play a kaiju playing a game of King of the Hill. That's King of Tokyo, King of the Hill. You want to be the monster on top. The monster in Tokyo is versus everyone else. And then everyone else is trying to beat the monster in Tokyo. You're in points for staying in Tokyo. You can knock other players out. And the whole thing's based on a very Yahtzee-like dice system with some rules for improving your monster through um, buying cards. This is the biggest thing that's going to limit your age group. As long as a kid can read, you're good with King of Tokyo. I would hope by seven, but you never know. And that was King of Tokyo. Now, my follow up to this is King of New York. This one is for a bit older kids and is probably going to appeal to strategy gamers, hobby board gamers more. This is basically the same game. You're still in Tokyo. You're still battling each or sorry, you're not still in Tokyo. You're still battling over a city. In this case, it's New York instead of Tokyo. But the difference is, is you got like military units attacking you and you can destroy them for victory points. And there's just more options available. And it's not just we beat up each other. King of New York to me is a step up from King of Tokyo, though I'll admit most of the time when I want to play that kind of game, I just stick to the original because I want the light, fluffy party game feel. And that was King of New York. Next, I have Monster Factory. So this is going to be the first of many games where I'm kind of stretching the limits of playing the monster. You're not playing a monster in this game, but you are building one or more. 
Uh, this is a tile laying game where you're going to connect these purple and green tiles together to try to make the monster with the most eyes. And if you manage to complete one monster, you then get to start building minions. It's a, it's a really simple, really quick. Um, this is my intro tile laying game to, for, for kids or younger kids or to someone who's like never even played Carcassonne. It's a great way to just get that. You need to match all the four edges of your tile to place it. There's some really fun mechanics in this and a little bit of take that where you can just instead of placing your piece, give it to your opponent to force them to play it. And that was Monster Factory. Now, the next one I thought of once Monsters Menace America. Now, to me, this is a classic Avalon Hill game at this point. It's been out for a long time. I might be out of print, and I do apologize if it is. I did not double check this list to make sure all these games are in print. Uh, this is like a more complex tactical version of King of Tokyo. In this game, you're playing a kaiju. You control one monster, but you also control one faction of the military. And you're trying to move around the hex board and destroy as many cities as you can while hindering your opponents with those military units. And then at the end of the game, once a certain time limit is lane reached, it really does turn into Tokyo because it becomes a big brawl. It's everyone who's still standing battles each other till it's the last monster standing. Now, I will say seven could be a bit too young for this one or just right. It would depend on the kid. And that was Monsters Menace America. Story and Cat, you still have my copy. Next, I have Rampage, now renamed as Terror in Meeple City. Hey, board game publishers, don't name your game after a classic game if, unless you have the actual rights. Uh, this is a fun dexterity game where you'll be pushing, tossing, flicking, and yes, blowing things around the map. Nowadays, you may want to get one of those little blower squeegee things instead of blowing on your game components. Um, you are doing this on a board that is filled with cardboard skyscrapers that are held up by meeples. So when your things hit the buildings, the meeple fall and then the ceilings fall and it makes a big mess. You're getting points for eating meeples and hitting other monsters. It really is a board game version of the classic video game Rampage with the classic, you know, Kong, Lizzie. They, they don't have those names, but... There's a reason it was originally called Rampage and a reason it no longer is as well. And that is now known as Terror in Meeple City. All right, the next one I have, this came up based on a suggestion on Twitter, and I agree with it, is Unmatched, depending on the set. So Unmatched is the Restoration Games modern version of the classic Jedi epic duels which no one realizes in any case it was a Star Wars game originally. But what it is, is it's a card-driven combat game where you are fighting ridiculous things against each other that probably shouldn't fight each other. So you've got like Bruce Lee versus the monster, the T-Rex. There are a number of villains and monsters out for this one, including uh, Dracula, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Medusa is a playable character in this and more. And they are constantly releasing new sets for Unmatched. This is an extremely popular two-player dueling game that can also play up to four. I don't know anyone that doesn't like this game at this point. And that was Unmatched. All right. I'm going with the fact that a giant T-Rex is pretty much a monster. So there is a two-player game out there called Raptor, uh, where one player is playing a pack of raptors. Think Jurassic Park with the nasty nail with the big claw on it. And the other player is playing a hapless human trying to survive against the raptors. It's a super asymmetric game running around on a map, supposedly extremely engaging, where one player gets to play a pack of dinos, which to me is playing the monsters. And that was Raptor. Okay, yeah, this one I think counts fully. Disney Villainous. Depending on how monstrous you consider some of the Disney villains, some are definitely more rare monster than others. I think you've got some real monsters mixed in with those villains. I, it's kind of a hard call on that one. Now, this is an extremely asymmetric game where every player is playing with a completely different player board with completely different player options, aiming for a completely different goal. And on your turn, you're going to try to um, advance your goal while trying to disrupt other players' goals by playing hero cards on the various villains and disrupting their plans. This is one I probably never would have played and got totally sucked in by once I finally sat down and tried. 
this was back in the days where you didn't really trust licensed games. And this was one of the first ones to start changing people's minds. And it's still fantastic. One of the great things about Villainous is there's the starter set with six villains, but there's all kinds of three villain sets out there. Those are all actually standalone games. You don't need to own the core game. You can just pick up one of those and start playing, or you can mix and match. And that was Disney Villainous. All right, getting back to actual monsters, not stretching anything here. Godzilla Tokyo Clash. This great looking game from Funkoverse that not only features the big guy himself, but many other of the classic Toho monsters. Now, in this one, it's another asymmetric game where each of the monsters gets its own unique deck that they use to battle each other and cause devastation to the city on a modular rearranged deck with 3D buildings on it. Uh, this is up there for table presence games that just look cool. And I know people who bought this just for the like Godzilla and Rodan figures. And that was Godzilla Tokyo Clash. Now, speaking of Funko games, there is the Funkoverse games, very similar to um, Unmatched in that way. There are a number of different sets, and this is actually a fairly solid, detailed skirmish battle game that happens to use pocket-sized Funko Pops. And I gotta admit, I wouldn't, nothing that interested me i don't care about pops i i'm not a funko collector but i sat down and played this game and i was like this is up there with like skirmish warhammer play like this is really well done each character has their own unique abilities they have cooldown powers and well honestly to say be honest that the figures look kind of cool when they're on the board together now specifically they just released the universal monster set so you've got you know your classics there in black and white, there's also a Nightmare Before Christmas set. There's a Jaws set, a Jurassic Park set, and I'm sure more monsters to come. And that was Funkoverse. All right, this one I found getting ready for tonight's episode, grabbing the games for a backdrop. I spotted Sorcerer on my shelf. Now, this one is definitely not for seven-year-olds. Um, read our review to find out exactly why. Uh, this is a mix of Smash Up and dueling card game, like very Magic the Gathering feeling dueling card game set in Victorian England. A bit of steampunk going on there, too. Now, you build your deck by picking a realm, a domain, and a character. And then you mash those three decks together, and you go at it with the other player, vying for control of three different areas. You need to take over two out of three areas of England. Now, as for playing the monster, just look at the cards in this game, look at the name of the cards, look at the theme of the cards, and you will fully realize you aren't playing some happy-go-lucky planeswalker in Sorcerer. And that was Sorcerer. Next, I have Monster Slaughter. This takes your typical teens versus the horrible masked or unmasked monster and turns it around where you're the monsters hunting the teenagers. Now, the community claims this is an age 10 plus or so, so I would guess it would depend on you and your seven-year-old enjoy watching Nightmare Before Christmas, or Night Nightmare Before Christmas, sorry, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street together or not, or if you're into the Freddy movies, if that's, or sorry, the Jason movies, I, I know some seven-year-olds that love stuff like that. Um, that would determine to me if it'd be good for that age grade, but I do love the twist on this theme. That was Monster Slaughter. All right, Monster Monsters. Similar to Monster Slaughter, because again, it's based on your typical monster hunter tropes where, you know, the Van Helsings are coming after you and everything. But instead, you're the monsters trying to hunt the humans. Now, this is a two player only card game. This is listed for five players and seems, uh, sorry, for age five up, five plus, and seems pretty light, like age five plus. It's got to be pretty light. Sadly, though, there wasn't a lot of information out there to tell me more on this one. Now, it was nominated for a Best Family Game Award, so I think this might be a perfect fit, actually, despite the fact I wasn't able to find a lot of information about the game. And that was Monster Monsters. Village Attacks. Again, this seems to be a trope of playing the monsters. You are playing an infamous monster of folklore. Think like, you know, your Frankensteins or your, your uh, Hunchback who has to defend their castle from the wave of angry pitchfork-wielding villagers. This is basically a tower defense game, 
with some really cool looking minis with a unique theme. And I dig the whole concept of that. It's it's you are the monster trying to defend against the angry mob. And that was Village Attacks. Next, I have Boss Monster. This one is the dungeon crawling version of that theme, though it's actually older. You are playing the boss, the boss monster, the final fight in a dungeon crawler. Though I got to say the look looks more kind of Castlevania to me than it does fantasy. It's kind of that look. You are the boss at the center of the dungeon, building various dungeon rooms to try to defend yourself from waves of heroes. Personally, I think this one's really simple, quick to learn, but there's a lot more going on than you'd expect, like trying to build your dungeon at the start so the heroes don't come to you. Switching over to my dungeon now kicks butt, so I want the heroes to come to me is a great part of this game. I really enjoy that. And I got to say, the theme of this and the pretty simple gameplay, I think, could be perfect for a seven-year-old. And that was Boss Monster. Next, I have Dungeon Lords. Not perfect for a seven-year-old. This is Boss Monster Taken to Extremes. This one is a heavy Euro game that I doubt would be right for our question asker tonight. But I want to mention it because I love it. This has the exact same theme of Boss Monster. You are defending your lair from the heroes, but is much more involved. You're digging corridors, you're hiring minions, you're having to feed your minions, you're building trap rooms. This is Dungeon Keeper the board game without the ability to slap your imps. And that was Dungeon Lords. Next, I have Die in the Dungeon. This is another reverse dungeon crawler that I wanted to call out, and that's because it's solo. You are playing a powerful fantasy monster. Um, think Beholders is one of the, the the main, like on the cover of the box, you got a Beholder or you're, you know, you're an owl bear, and you're stolen from your home and you're tossed into a random dungeon by some annoying wizard. In this one, you have to actually wander around this random dungeon and defeat every hero to win. And that was Die in the Dungeon. Next, I have one that is coming soon. I haven't gotten to try this one, obviously, but it is Gathering Gloom. This is a one to four player game where you play a family of monsters trying to solve crises in the town in your mansion while trying to avoid being outed by the villagers. Obviously inspired by classic TV series like the Monsters in the Adams Family, this one sounds quite fun. And that was Gathering Gloom. And just before we went live, much to Sean's chagrin, because I threw this in there and it's not in his notes, uh, my daughter came to me with one more to add to the list, and that is Vampires of the Night. This is a great kids game that my kids loved when they were younger, where you are a vampire trying to get all the garlic off the board. And you literally physically, it's a dexterity game where you have a board with a bunch of holes in it and you're trying to knock little garlic tokens down into the holes. The interesting bit here is that it's a dexterity game where you actually use a poker to move your vampire around the board, which is harder to do than you would think. And that was Vampires of the Night. Well, next we have some one verse mini games, games where one player is the monster, but the others aren't. We weren't initially sure if we should include these as only one player plays the monster, but figured, why not? I guess technically I probably should have put Raptor up here, but because it was two player, it didn't click in. All right, the number one, this one popped in my head when I was thinking about games when you play the monster. My personal copy is right behind me over there, and that is Fury of Dracula. I think I might own this game at age seven. I'm not sure. It's I, the one I have is an original Games Workshop version of it. I think it's now in its fourth edition. And everyone I know who plays this game actually says the newer editions are better. So don't be jealous of my copy back there. Um, this is a game where one player is Dracula and everyone else are the vampire hunters trying to catch them. It uses some really smart hidden movement systems. Um, and I... DM screens, one versus many, extremely popular. It's been around this time. And if you want the feel of like playing Dracula, sneaking around, trying to ambush people, it's a fantastic game. And that was Fury of Dracula. Next, I have Not Alone, one I will admit I haven't gotten to try myself, but I have heard really good things. And this actually is the most recommended monster game on Twitter based on my questions. This is a game based on, honestly, Alien. I'll just say it's Alien. But any of those, you're on a spaceship, you're on a space hulk, you're alone on a planet, and one player plays the creature. Now, I will say this one might be a bit much for a seven-year-old, but the community does say 10 plus. The box is like 14 plus. So it is possible. Uh, this is supposed to be a really well done 
one versus many game that doesn't use the whole hidden map thing that a lot of these other games have where you have to track where you've moved and where you're going to. And that was Not Alone. All right, jumping down one, skipped over one and decided it didn't fit well is Jaws. I, Jaws is a monster, right? Like one player plays the shark, which many people consider to be one of the famous movie monsters. I know people who are still fighting to make Jaws an official Universal monster because it's from Universal Pictures. And if you go to U Universal Orlando, you can get your picture taken next to the shark. Uh, this is a great one versus many game, a game that completely surprised me. Even as someone who had never seen the movies, because I didn't like horrors growing up, it, the game played great. One person's playing the shark, the other person's out there at first trying to get um, but he barrels on the shark, and then you switch to a second half of the game where your shark's trying to destroy your boat while you're trying to kill the shark. Really well done game. Uh, one of the games that made me realize just how brilliant the design group Prospero Hall is. Absolutely. And that was Jaws. Well, so far, all we've talked about are board games, but there mm -hmm. are many RPGs out there that let you play the monster. What I don't actually know of any really kid friendly RPGs that fit this genre, the ones we're about to mention are for a more adult audience. Yeah, like the I like Mermaid Adventures. I get you're playing a mermaid. Does that count? Like I honest and hero kids, I didn't really see any monstrous races. If they're out there, please let us know if you know of a RPG targeted at kids where you play monsters. Like, I know there's that calendar with the baby monsters. Like, has anyone written the RPG version? We get to play those baby monsters. That might work. So the first game I thought of when I heard play the monster was Monster Hearts. Now, I'm sure no seven year old wants to play a game about teen angst and sexual frustration. It's definitely a game where you get to play the monster and a very popular one. For RPG recommendations, this is the one I saw the most. This is, I will admit, not a game I have tried, but I have sat in on a session. It's uh, powered by the apocalypse. Uh, it's, it's uh, what do you call it? What's the one you run? I can't remember the name it's of it. Ma it's Masks. It's, it's Masks with Monsters. Yes, yeah. you, are, you are playing Teen Wolf or, or Buffy the Vampire Slayer or any of those teen angsty, everyone's dating everyone and in love with everyone unless they hate each other that week monster of the week stuff going on and that was monster hearts all right next one i have is wicked ones this is a forged in the dark role-playing game where you play fantasy monsters raiding human lands now a number of people recommended this one to me while researching the topic and i gotta say it sounds really fun this is a you're playing the orc hordes and the gnolls and the bad guys attacking the human lands and trying to avoid or defeat the heroes. I got to say, seeing this, I knew of a number of board games that had this theme. I didn't realize there were it was an RPG out there that let you do this. And that was the Wicked Ones. All right, we grew up uh, through the 80s and into the 90s, and I think anyone else that was alive at the time period is well aware of probably the most popular role-playing games about playing monsters, and those are the various World of Darkness games. Of course, the most well-known being Vampire the Masquerade, but also including other games where you could play werewolves or mummies or fairies, or I don't even remember some of the other ones I have downstairs. Ghosts, I think, was one. And, well, there was a Street Fighter version, which was pretty monstrous on its own. And that was the World of Darkness games. Next, something that to me is kind of the same thing, and that's Urban Shadows. To me, this is someone who was a, a World of Darkness fan trying to modernize that game. This is a modern urban fantasy role-playing game that uses a more modern rule set, more narrative style of play. It's more of a, you know, a, a, a story game than the old White Wolf system. And and to me, this is a, wow, we hate the D10 dice pool system and we kind of hate where World of Darkness went. We want to do our own thing with it. This is where you are playing in modern world, but fairies are real or vampires are real and monsters are real. And that was Urban Shadows. Next, I have Undying. This is a diceless role-playing game from Magpie Games that is all about vampirism, but a totally different style than Urban Shadows and World of Darkness. I haven't played this one myself, but if you want a different look at playing vampires, everyone playing a vampire, check out Undying. And that was Undying. All right, finally, for role-playing games, I do need to call out an old AD&D second edition book. The Book of Humanoids. This had rules for playing non 
human humanoid races, most of which were considered monsters at the time the book was out. Now, I ran a campaign where everyone picked a race from this book and we had a great time. Now, I have no idea if anyone's done a D&D 5e version of this book, but at the time it was pretty groundbreaking and a lot of fun to play around with. And that is the Book of Humanoid. So finally, we have some honorable mentions. While we already stretched the definition of playing the monster quite a bit, these ones go even further. Yeah, these are ones I'm not even sure if we should have mentioned or not. Uh, the first is Monster Apocalypse. So this one's just weird because the game's been forever, like, stretched out. This game came out and was canceled and then came out again and then was canceled. Then someone else bought it and put it out and it was canceled. Now, originally, when Monster Apocalypse came out, it was a collectible click style game where you bought booster packs and random packs that I think would have been perfect for a seven year old because it used a pretty simple grid and everything was pre-painted. There wasn't any hobby elements to it. Now, in 2022, this has become a full hobby miniature kaiju battle skirmish game, now published by Privateer Press, the people behind the Warma Horde system. Here, you're playing a team of kaiju and other units. So you're not the monster. You're like the invading alien force or the human defenders or basically the Ultra 7 or the Ultraverse. Or not Ultraverse, Ultraman. Uh, this is a really neat game, but you're playing a bunch of monsters instead of the monster. And like I said, the latest version of this game is a full-on hobby. Assemble your miniatures, build scenery. Uh, more of a lifestyle game than the original collectible one. And that was Monster Apocalypse. Next, I have Smash Up that I only include because I included like Unmatched in that. So this is a game about taking two decks and smashing them together, then playing cards in an area majority battle where you're fighting off, off over different areas of the city. Um, there are a lot of decks here, and many of the decks to me I would consider monsters. There might even be a deck called Monsters, but there's dinosaurs and there's aliens and there's kaiju and there's... Um, I'm flying unicorns, which I think some people consider pretty monstrous. And that was Smash Up. Uh, next, one of my favorite games of all time set in one of my favorite settings of all time is Chaos in the Old World. Now, I wanted to put this on the list, but enough other people pointed out games I didn't think fit on the list that kind of fit this theme. Now, I don't know, this doesn't really give you the feel of playing a monster, but you are specifically playing one of the five chaos gods in the Warhammer world, though that's kind of your high level goal. And each play is completely different, but really you're just moving units on a map and it's area majority and backstabbing. So I don't know if that gives you the feel of playing a monster, though thematically you are one of the five chaos gods, which are quite monstrous. And that was chaos in the old world. Now, the arguments people put against me when I recommended Chaos in the Old World were games like War of the Ring or Warhammer Fantasy Battle or Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40K or any of these two player war games where one side is an army of monsters. Now, I'm not sure this would count, but I figure if I had to put on Chaos in the Old World, I figured I would throw on these kind of in a big bulk thing. Like, yes, I get it. Your Tyranids and Warhammer 40k are monsters. Fair enough. But again, I don't get the feel you're playing the monster with those. Right. And so that is general two player war games. <laughs> yes, they war include games. monstrous factions, I right. guess. Yeah, I don't know how I'm putting this one on the, the, the linked version. Uh, next, I have Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I think this one fits better, actually. Uh, than the last two. This time you are playing the monsters raiding the human lands, just like one of the role-playing games we mentioned above. Uh, this is a flip on the theme of Valeria Card Kingdoms, which is a game I love. Valeria Card Kingdoms is fantastic. Shadow Kingdoms is also good. Again, though, you're not playing a monster, you're playing a monstrous horde. But something about this one, because you're actually customizing your horde and leveling up and improving, gave me more of a feel that I was playing a monster, like a general of that army, than playing the army itself. So I think this one's this one's more borderline than, say, Chaos of the Old World. And that was Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Next, I have Warband Against the Darkness. I think I mainly wanted to put this on the list because no one's heard of this game, and I think it's a hidden gem. This is a game about forming that monstrous horde, right? So you got your horde of orcs or your horde of armies about to attack, the um the heroes that sounds like it's cooperative because you're all playing various generals and lieutenants who are vying for power trying to get your minions to be at the top of the ranks and to lead the various armies as they're about to go into battle and it's really just like a big top-down um 
do you call that in a company and you have your 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 levels can't think of the dang term org chart yes basically you're building an org chart for your fantasy army trying to make sure your me your meeple are in the right place right that you're, you've got the most people on the map it is a very unique game it's a very unique theme it's one of the most unique games in my my collection and you are pay playing one faction like you might be the gi fire giants and sean might be the rock golems and we're trying to get our units to take part in the big fight unique theme Again, though, you're not really playing the monster. You're playing a horde. That was Warband Against the Darkness. All right, my last honorable mention is Tyrants of the Underdark. This is another one where you're actually playing the leader of a monstrous faction, in this case, Drow Houses. Drow are one of the most well-known humanoid monsters in Dungeons and Dragons, so I think this fits at least tangentially. Even if it doesn't, I don't mind calling out such a great game. This is a mashup of deck building and folk on the map with plenty of backstabbing and intrigue. It's another one that we've reviewed. Check out our review to learn more about this fantastic game. And that is, uh, yeah, sorry. Tyrants that was Tyrants of the Underdark. Of the Underdark. Uh, so I'm going to slip in one little uh, minor yep. honorable mention here. And this is arguable whether you are playing uh, playing monsters or playing with monsters, but this is a recent Vladimir Shuchi game from 2019, Monster Baby Rescue. Okay. Where, and this is very much family, and this is very this is probably a fantastic game for a seven year old. It just may not be quite monstrous enough because you're playing with monsters rather than as monsters. Uh, but that's right. Monster Baby Re Rescue by Vladimir Suchi, who's uh, done such fantastic games we love as uh, um, Brain Fart. Um, Pulsar. <laughs> okay, I didn't know which game we were going to call yeah. out by Suchi. All right, if you're going to throw that in, I'll also throw Dungeon Pets, which was a lighter version of Dungeon Lords, all about raising the monsters for your dungeon. But again, you're playing the person raising the monster. So I didn't throw that on here. So I think similar theme in, as that one. I will admit I have not played Dungeon Pets because I love Dungeon Lords. And people told me it's a lighter version. I'm like, I don't want a lighter version. I want to play Dungeon Lords. I want to play a light version. I'll go grab Boss Monster. Well, that's it for our list of games to let you play the monster. Have you played any of these games? What's your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you've got a question for us, head to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or hit me up anywhere on social media. All right. Now that we've gone through our list of monstrous games, I know the chat room has yep. had some more to add here. Some of these are fantastic. Uh, so uh, Major Kayla says, if you want non-humanoid RPGs for kids, there is Weird Scouts and Good Strong Hands. That's Weird Scouts, W-Y-R-D Scouts, and Good Strong Hands, oh. which were both any nominees for Best Family Game. Good Strong Hands looked amazing. That is based on um, the never-ending story. The, the rock biter who's complaining that he couldn't save his friends from the nothing. Uh, from what I understand, that's a game where you are set in a town where terrible things are happening. You can't escape. And it's up to you to work together to prevent the the trouble that is happening to the town. Weird Scouts, I know nothing about. So that's Weird one Scouts, I'm... you have some Fey Antress ancestry, be it Pixie, Giant, etc. Okay. Apparently. Uh, and Ryan's mentioning that uh, Dragonflight allows you to play dragons in 5e. Uh, and uh, there is an upcoming... Yeah, I remember 3.5 had an entire... Book there, on playing. There's an up there's an upcoming uh game called Delver's Guide to the Beast World that's uh forthcoming. So uh that's I have to see what that is when it comes out. There is a 3.5 supplement that I can picture the cover of. My cousin brought it over uh, when we were playing 3.5, or Deanna's cousin actually, and, and it lets you play dragons. Age of Worms, that might be it. That might be the one. Oh, that was three two E though. I swear I'm picturing a 3.5 book. And uh, Ron Talks Tabletop mentioned, uh, says, we mentioned Boss Monster, but what about Overboss? I don't know enough about Overboss to have put it on the list. No one else recommended it, and I didn't think to go look it up. I, I don't know if it's, isn't it just, I don't know. I don't know Overboss myself. Overboss, a boss monster adventure. Conquer the world and become the Overboss in this puzzly map building game. Uh, again, yeah. 
are you playing the monster in that one? Maybe. I guess if you are in Boss Monster. Because I will say in Boss Monster, the one thing that I, is missing from that is I don't think you get to figure out what monster you are. Like, I don't think it's like, you are Dracula, you are the Blob, you are the Gelatinous Cube. Oh, here's one I didn't think of. Uh, Ex Libris, in a way. But really, that's technically your minion. The the library building game, right? Because the one person had a, had a golem, another person had a gelatinous mm. cube. Mm. Though you don't really get the feel you're playing a monster. No, it's you just really you don't. have a playing piece with a special power. Uh, so one I didn't put on the list. is a dragon game. Don't know that one. E-P-Y-L-L-I-O-N. Yeah, no, I de- I'm with D. Yeah, Ex Libra doesn't count. Apillion was uh, was the latest recommendation we got on Twitter, but it was just before we got live, so I didn't get to oh, do okay. the, the recommendation. So someone else recommended that. Um, I see not so family friendly as Hidden Worlds, soon to be released to play as Others. Um, there, that is another cool mini or not. The Others was another one that people recommended. That's another you collect your army and you battle against someone else. Plus, I, the game wasn't very well regarded, and it's very much not for seven-year-olds. It's right. the, <laughs> the seven armies of the seven deadly sins, mm. and it's very over-the-top miniatures ranging from body to disgusting. Right. Uh, one of the ones I wanted to put on this list and I couldn't decide was, what do you think for Pandora? Like, I know the government views you as monsters. Are no, you monsters? No, 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 uh, no, you're, I mean, you're, you're trying to, uh, control yourself. You're, you, no, no, that's that, okay. that, 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 that goes into the not evil, uh, evil doesn't equal, uh, evil. Yeah. Evil doesn't equal monster. I think that would be, I think that would be almost problematic calling that one. Uh, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm like, I, I had the thought. I'm like, I don't think so. No. Uh, I mean, there are so- probably, supers games where you do play a monster per se uh, or more of a monstrous yeah someone pointed out any game you play you can play the hulk was one of the things someone said on twitter and i'm like all right i can see that yeah and even the beast like character mutation to me uh, you know again just the fact that you're monstrous doesn't necessarily make you a monster it's it's that combination of uh of things although i guess we didn't really we didn't uh yeah, we didn't spend a lot of time defending it. But again, I'm thinking seven-year-old thoughts of monster. Yeah. Like technically in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, you can go down the corruption path. In DCC, you can be a sorcerer and go down that version of corruption, which could lead to monstrous things. But I don't think that's the thing. There's got to be a game out there. You play Frankenstein. I swear my friend Mike had one. And it was dice based and you put dice in your various like joints to do things, but I could not find it. And then there was another kaiju game where you built a city out of square cards and you moved your standees around. And when you fought someone else, you played a card from your hand and it was like bite slash claw. And then there was some other thing that was super powerful. And you played rock, paper, scissors, and that's who determined who won the fight. And if I remember, you were flipping or collecting the cards and it was really good, but I can't remember what. It was called at all. I tried writing the person who taught the demo of it, but they weren't available, so I didn't get an answer on that one. So there's Abomination, the Arrow of Frankenstein, but you're playing. No, you're, you're building playing Frankenstein. Well, Frankenstein, yes, not again, the again, you get the, the argument that the real monster was Frankenstein, but yes, yeah, Abomination. That's that's again a seven year old. I don't know, depending on <laughs> what you're not. into, because you're, you're kind of literally body like, horror. yes, there's body horror in that one. Like, I just, I'm like, there has to be more. I, I Like, Gargoyles? That doesn't count, right? The Gargoyles board game? Like, Gargoyles uh, are monsters. I mean, for a seven-year-old, but... I think Gargoyles probably are monsters. No, but I'm talking about Disney's Gargoyles. Yeah, no, I know. Like, there is a Disney's Gargoyles game, so that might go on our list. Yep. An official Monsters game. Ooh, that, that would yep. be interesting. There is one. Mm-hmm. Either out or it's coming. Are you oh, seeing yeah, Chad on that? Monsters, aren't they? Yes. I swear there's a Monsters, a modern Monsters. Well, there was a 1964 no, card game. <laughs> yeah, there was a 65 version and Monsters Picnic and there were multiple games, but I thought there was a new one announced. Uh, I see four right now, a 64, 65, 65, and 65 yeah, for Monsters, was... the TV show. Draconomicon there, Ron Talks Tabletop, got the 3.5 book. I couldn't remember. Okay. 
that was the name. I'm like, I thought it was something, but I was, I'm like, I thought I didn't want to mix it up with those like Pyronomicon or whatever those books that are just like lots of weird tchotchkes shoved in a book <laughs> that are extremely popular. Yeah, so I guess there isn't a new. Uh, no, I guess there yes. isn't a new monsters game. Monsters. So one of the RPGs we mentioned sounded like it's for playing the monsters. Uh, or no, Adam's, that was the Adam's board game. Family sorry. could be I argued to be a uh, yes. playing monsters. Uh, there's the the Find Uncle Fester card game. Well, again, that's what Gathering Gloom is, right? That's that's yeah. the the theme of Gathering Gloom is you're playing a family of monsters solving crises. Thank you, chat room, for all the awesome suggestions and for coming up with stuff just before we said it or just after. I saw all kinds of stuff. Oh, there you go. Curse of the House of Rookwood. RPG oh. for playing the Adams Family. There we go. I am going to toss that quickly in my notes. <laughs> or when I do the show notes, I'll try to throw in links to these things. 